do we know about May 2024 FOMC meeting? Why did the US stock market go up first and then down again? Will there be a stock market correction? And what can investors do now? These are the things I'm going to discuss in this video. Hello, I'm Beanie here. Today, I'll be discussing about the US stock market and to give a little bit more emphasis into the NASDAQ. Now, in May 2024 FOMC meeting, the key point here is that the Federal Reserve isn't quite ready to concede that economic trends may force them to think about raising rates again. So for now, now, their policy stance remains the same. They either lower rates or maintain them for an extended period of time if necessary. Power made this clear when he stated, we are prepared to keep rates higher for as long as needed. In a way, telling us nothing has really changed, right, on uh, May 2024 meeting. Currently, the market has priced in a total of 35 basis points of rate cuts for the year. This is slightly up from approximately about 31 basis points prior to yesterday's Fed meeting. The probability of a rate cut in September is around 56%, with November's odd at about 67%. Now, these figures hasn't dramatically changed since before the meeting and Powell's press conference. So what's the next step? It all comes down to data. We'll be watching to see how it influences economic forecasts and the Fed perspectives. And we won't have to wait long for the next piece of puzzle, the US job reports due tomorrow. Now with this, I would like to take a look into the indexes, especially into NASDAQ, and to see what are the key levels, and especially on some of the short-term trading instruments, especially we know that the market is probably going to be quite volatile for a while. Have you clicked the subscribe button? And how about a light? Right, so this is the day chart of NASDAQ. If you take a look at the overall trend, I would say that the trend is still up. So this one, I mean, even after what happened last night, the uptrend is still intact. But let's focus a little bit on the more recent trend, starting from October 2023 until right now here. So we can see that each of the low is making a higher low since October 23 until about this point here, and that's about mid-April or early April, right? And then price is making a higher high. So this is very much still maintaining as an uptrend. But if you inspect the recent price action that's happened after mid-April, uh, then we can see quite a significant change in terms of the mode, right? And uh, that price made a lower low. Okay, so that's, that's a bit of a change in that such that uh, there is a uh, double top and we have price to break below that of a double top then uh, price is right now retracing to the neckline of this double top here. Okay, in a way that uh, what I can say is the first sign of a reversal pattern, all right? And then you have a lower high here that's being made. And that's the first sign of a reversal pattern to show that this uptrend is temporarily being disrupted. Okay, probably the start of the downward move, all right, is starting. Okay, uh, not saying that it's a long term downward move, but probably this uptrend here is facing some short term correction. All right, so let's take a look at what happened last night in terms of the, the one hour chart. Okay, so we can see that based on the one hour chart, the impulse movement is a downward movement with a very clear ABC correction. Okay, so that's a corrective wave here, right? And that um, the high of this move here, that's, that's around here, is a clear resistance. Okay, that means that price made this ABC wave here, that's the A and the B and the C wave here, right? And then price moved down. And what happened last night around this point here, uh, after power Q&A, market moved up on a bit of a optimism, but quickly hit the resistance and then moved back down. Okay, so what I want to say is that the down move is still intact, meaning that price is probably still going to follow this structure here of moving down and probably just going to continue to go down here. All right, so that's what I think the short term movement of NASDAQ is doing at this moment. And probably last night showed the true intention of the market uh, after Powell's uh, Q&A and after FOMC meeting. Do I think there will be a stock correction? 
I think so for the short term. Do I think there will be a market crash? I'm not sure because really, based on price action, there must be certain levels that must be breached. And let me just point out some important levels here. So this was a high that was made during 2022 and obviously it was quite a significant high. That means that when this high was broken, Nasdaq continued to move up. Alright, so what it means is that Nasdaq must never close below the high that it broke and that's about 16,700. I would really give it a little bit of a buffer. That means that Nasdaq should never close below 16,500. And that is what I think is the key support here right now. Of course, that if we inspect uh, as price starts to move nearer to this level, we also need to check out the price action. But uh, in any case that price is to break below here then those people who bought in for a long-term position around here would be washed and rinsed okay if you want to know more about wash and rinse please remember to watch my series of videos on wash and rinse you can click on the link uh, that i've posted up in the description section so that you can know how to use wash and rinse in your trading all this high didn't uh, and when they see this all right so there was a little bit of a uh, resistance here and it moved down a little bit but eventually it moves much higher so i have to assume that there was some buying here and then those people who bought in gain gain some money but at this moment it's actually moving down uh, so they are still not in the loss yet but if price is to close below this level here then yes they would be in a loss and that might lead to some market selling or some desperate selling uh, if you know price is to break the 16,500 support level so I think that the uptrend is still very much still intact. All right. And uh, I would assume first, okay, that means I wouldn't assume that it will, this level will break. I will assume that this level will stay as a su support, right? That means that if price is to come down after this correction, as it moves out, it's probably going to hit into this zone here as a support level or slightly near to that equidistance channel low. And that's probably around 16,200. So in this case here, yes, we do have a bit of a temporary down downward movement but we might see support around 16,500 even to the low point here let me just mark that in about 16,200 which is the equidistance channel low here all right now this gives us and opens up right a little bit of a short-term trading that's probably going to take a bit of a bearish view here and when it reaches here to probably look for price action to take a bullish view okay so let's take a look at what are the short-term instruments that we can consider using for this type of a price movement let's head to mirror asset uh, dlc's that's daily leverage certificates uh, if you look at the description here you can trade the nasdaq 100 index and s p 500 and sgx during daytime all right and the price is following the nasdaq futures and the s p 500 uh, futures right now why is this good to trade during the daytime because then let's assuming you are expecting a huge move in the u.s market when it opens at night uh, then you can already tap into the current price okay that means that you don't you don't you don't uh, trade the u.s market during the light night time you can do that during the daytime before the uh, cash markets open so that's one of the benefit here right okay so scroll down you find that at the underlying there would be ndx and spx right so these are the two indexes the ndx will be nasdaq and spx will be s p 500 so there will be two types of uh, contract which would be the daily long and the daily short let me just uh, select that for you so scroll down you find the ndx stock and and you select the type which is daily long daily short now what does daily long means uh, it means that if you are bullish in the future then you want to buy a daily long dlc's okay if you are bearish in the future then you want to buy a daily short dlc's it gives you the flexibility without owning anything because you can just choose the direction if you're bullish you choose a daily long and if you're bearish you choose a daily short right so let me just search this index here well, if you are bullish, then choose this QQQW. If you are bearish, then choose this IQQW. 
Okay, and uh, you find that the price of the DLCs aren't that expensive because then uh, it's the four ten for the long contract and then seven eight uh, to seven eight and a half for the short contract. Try the simulator on how each movement of the Nasdaq can affect the price of the DLCs. All right, I hope that you enjoyed today's video when I've presented uh, key levels in NASDAQ and as well as what uh, investors might be able to do uh, with the knowledge of these levels here. Uh, as I want to bring out is that trading is high risk. Do consider whether trading is you know suitable for you. And with this, I will end my video today. If you do have any other stocks or indexes that you want me to discuss, send me a message. And I'll be very happy to talk about that. Alright, and remember to click the subscribe button. Thank you and see you.